Well, we've got a fun one here today, guys. This is the iZip E3 Go. It's an electric assist trike from iZip. Uh, you know, I've seen trikes in the past from companies that are part of the Excel group. Uh, they actually have the Raleigh Tri-Ride, and it's like the exact same trike, only a different color. You know, I'm, I'm kind of partial to this navy. It looks good, and it's got the silver matching fenders, got a little bit of a chain cover right here. Comes with the same great two-year comprehensive warranty. Available at dealers, so you can give it a try. Uh, I'm gonna jump into the specs and just try to give you a feel for, for what you're getting with this trike. So you can see the wheels back here, they're slightly smaller than the front ones. These are 20 by 1.95. They're gonna bring down that, that rear axle so that maybe the basket's easier to load. You know, this is just a kind of a steel mesh basket. There's a little a slot here so you could potentially add a flagpole, which I love. And then they've got some reflectors and stuff. If we go up to the front, a little bit of a, a larger tire, also by Innova. And this one's 24 by 1.95. So they're both the same sort of thickness. And 1.95, almost two inches, that's a little bit fatter. A little bit more comfortable, help to absorb some of those bumps, appreciate that. But the larger wheel up here might span cracks a little bit easier and just it just rides a little bit more efficient. When you get to these smaller wheels, they actually tend to be a little bit stronger. And I think it might even empower the motor here a little bit. So, you know, it's not having to turn this big diameter as much. So a great choice back here. There's actually really good clearance on this trike. Sometimes with smaller wheels on like the cargo bikes, some of them have smaller rear wheels. It, it hangs the derailleur and other things really low. But in this case, we've got a three-speed internally geared hub, Sturmy Archer. And this thing can be shifted at standstill. And it's got this little tensioner here that's fairly high up so it's a pretty capable little bike you can get along just fine and being able to switch gears at standstill with that internally geared hub is is awesome and the fact that it uses a mid-drive motor those two systems work together very well and i'll get into that when i'm riding later but you know while we're down here peeking around it's just worth calling out you can see over there there's a, a mechanical disc brake and in the front we have more of an old-fashioned linear pull brake these work fine. Um, in both cases, Promax levers, and they've got this little locking pin, which stands as a parking brake. So when you get off the bike, being a trike, you know, there's no kickstand to keep it uh, from tipping because you've got three wheels, but you still need to worry about it rolling away. In fact, if I, if I undo this and just give it a little push, you could see that if this was on a, maybe a driveway or something, it could start to roll away, especially if you've got all your groceries or some gear back there. So to activate that, you just, pull in the brake lever, push down the pin. There's one on either side, which is really great. While we're up here, I'll call out these, uh, they're kind of generic, but they're ergonomic grips, rubber. And then we've got our uh, gear shifter over here. This is a grip twist. You can see the Sturmy Archer branding. I'm in the third gear, that's the highest right now. If I click down to two or one, that would be a good one to, to start. And you can see there's a little graphic here that says climbing. Usually when you're climbing, you want a real easy gear to work with. Very simple, easy to use. Control pad sort of balances out over on this side, and that, that helps you to uh, interact with the display, which we'll get to in a minute. So we've got these swept back, kind of a mid-rise bar. It's not quite as forward and aggressive as other bars. And it really complements this huge saddle. I don't know who makes this, but it's just, it's giant and it's really comfortable and, and squishy. And that's great because you you really don't have any suspension on a trike like this. You're not going super fast. I think the top speed's like 12 or 13 miles per hour. But you know, the saddle combined with those tires is is great. And it helps to take the, just the stress off your back and neck. Plastic pedals, got some nice rubber grip so you shouldn't slip off too easily, but maybe you won't cut your shins off if you accidentally slip. You know, if it was rainy, hopefully you're gonna be um, staying dry with the fenders and stuff, but I'm just thinking about the touch points here on, on the trike in terms of comfort, but also, uh, you know, danger zones. It only comes in one frame size. It's like 16 inches here. It's kind of measuring that uh, the seat tube. That's usually how you do it, but that doesn't really tell the whole story. So back at the site, I've measured reach, which for me is kind of from that, that seat post up here to the head tube. I've also done standover height, 
so you know how high you're gonna have to pick up your, your leg, which really isn't that high on this trek. I love that it's this deep step through. And, you know, just coming back to how purpose-built this thing is, a lot of trikes have a hub motor in the front wheel or, you know, maybe in the back or something. This one has a mid-drive, and with those three gears, it's very efficient. You're not going to be spinning out the way that you might with a, a front wheel motor, and it just it balances the whole trike out. It's not perfectly balanced. It's maybe a little bit rear-heavy still, just with all the extra wheels, and that's where the battery is. But I think that's a good system. It's definitely more efficient, and it offers a pretty good amount of torque it's it you know again pretty pretty good all around but of course the price is a little bit higher on this is $25.99 um, you get the two-year warranty because it's you know a company that has distribution and a long history of making bikes izip has been around for many years I've reviewed a bunch of their stuff and you know I, I feel like I have a, a good trust for their company in fact I'm at their headquarters here in Simi Valley California I've been looking at all the different new trikes for this year uh, but anyway Coming back to the battery and maybe the rear end of the bike, it feels like they've done a good job getting sharp edges off of the basket, but it is steel and it is kind of a, a mesh. So on the one hand, it's durable. There's a little bit of rattling, not too bad. It, you know, that's one thing I think about. I, I try to check like, you know, is this sharp? Are you gonna get cut? So I would say still be careful, but it seems like it's working pretty well. And then the battery is mounted below it. And at first I thought, oh, maybe there's, there could do two batteries. Well, this second tray isn't wired in. That's more just like a little storage compartment if you wanted to increase your range by getting an extra battery pack. The battery that it comes with is pretty good. And I might try to take this off. You kind of turn the key to the left. And then I'm actually gonna try to use my feet for this because it was sticking a little bit before. There we go. I really had to pull to get it off because I think the tray bends up a little bit the plastic and it just it creates kind of a you know it's a little bit more friction there so here's the battery 7.4 pounds 48 volt 8.8 .8 amp hours so 48 volts going to send electricity a little bit more efficiently a lot of the older batteries were like 36 volt 10 amp hours so this is pretty comparable but you get a little bit more power maybe you can see the charging port here on the right side got a nice rubber cap seals pretty well over it and then the handle that i was using to pull it out it's actually magnetic so it it stays in it's not going to rattle around it's a nice little touch and then the keyhole on the other side as well as the on off button do you see that right there you can actually press it and see how full the battery is even when it's not mounted to the bike and i like that but i've noticed that you you have to push this again when it is on the bike to activate that display and at first i was confused i was like where is the power button and it took me a minute to find that. So I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna slide this back on, but you really have to line it up just right. It's hard to do with just one hand, but I think we got it. And you know, make sure the key's down and then I just gotta slam it. There we go. So that it really locks in there. It's, you know, it could maybe be refined a little bit. And there's the button again. You, you have to reach all the way down here and press that to turn on the bike. Thankfully you do not need to leave the keys in so they won't be rattling around if you don't want. I don't wanna forget them. So I'm gonna leave them there for a ride test nice and tucked out of the way back here here is the charger so fairly standard two amps um, I've seen some chargers that put out four amps or you know three or 2.5 I you know this is a little bit at the lower end but it does have that nice silver metal cap at the end so if you're stepping on it or dropping it that's not gonna break as easily as just all plastic and the charger itself is under two pounds so you could easily toss that back here in the bucket and take it to your friend's house and charge it up or take it to work or wherever and you should be fine okay we'll come back up here to the cockpit i press the power button down there and i'm going to press it again up here and the display comes to life pretty intuitive right now you can see speed in miles per hour if you want you can hold down these boxes right here and it changes to kilometers per hour so this bike is kind of international let's see switch it back to miles per hour now, if I just press those little boxes, it's going to switch from showing me speed to my odometer. That's how far the bike has gone. A trip meter, that's how far it's gone just this ride. And then range, this is really cool. That's dynamically approximating how far the bike thinks it can go with the remaining battery capacity. Okay, so we've already used a little bit of the battery, but we're fairly full. It's got five out of five bars. So 13 miles on the highest level of pedal assist 
it's not bad. If we arrow down a little bit to three, it jumps way up to 24 miles, down to two, 33 miles, and down to one, that's the lowest level of assist, 44 miles. No, you aren't gonna get a whole lot of extra support on the first level of assist, but you know, hey, it's better than nothing. And that's quite the range there. You can see there's also a little, um, kind of a light sensor built in, because this does have backlighting. So if it gets dark out, you should still be able to read this display, and you really don't even need to do anything to get that to, to happen. This bike comes pre-wired for lights. See, there's an extra little wire right here, and then there's some extra wiring in the back. So if you bought it from a shop, you could get some help putting lights on, and then you could press and hold this plus button for a few seconds. And you can see there, it shows a little light. That is so cool. So you could run the lights right off that main battery pack, which is great because then they aren't, you're not gonna forget them. They might not get stolen as easily. And really, you know, with, with those aftermarket lights, I always leave them on accidentally. And then I come back and they're, they're drained out. So that's kind of a bummer. So you've got a nice connection point up here for the display. It's all modular and they're using a CAN bus system, which basically means computers can talk to each one of these components and diagnose any problems with the shop. And that makes it a little bit more reliable and easy to service for those shops. See the cables are all internally routed through the frame. They stay pretty much out of the way, but I did notice that when I was pedaling, especially on this side, there was a little bit of, you know, I accidentally snagged my foot on these cables for the shifting uh, once. I don't have especially large feet, but you know, that's something to kind of keep in mind right there. See how it's, it gets kind of close. You just don't want to bump that, potentially cause damage. Okay, the other thing that can be wired in is a throttle okay and they actually call this a boost button it doesn't work from standstill you actually have to get the trike going a little bit before you can use it and you do have to buy this separately i think it's about 50 bucks and they just plug it in down here with these cables and then you can mount it up here you know it's it's an interesting system you have to hold the power button here and then it, it activates like throttle mode and then you can reach over and go six miles per hour by holding the top button or up to full speed, which again, you know, 12, 13 miles per hour by holding the bottom button. The fact that it doesn't take you from, from zero is kind of a bummer, because for me, it's, it's those first couple pedal strokes that, that are the hardest, because you've got all that weight. It's like 85 pounds right here with the battery, with the motor, all that. It's, it's not super light. And I guess, you know, coming back to that throttle button, you have to reach way over all the way across this display and then hold that button the whole time. And that creates some hand fatigue. I don't have the largest hands, but there are people with smaller hands than mine. And I just, you know, maybe you'd mount the throttle on this side instead. I guess those are just some considerations I'd make. I, I'm not sure I'd get the throttle actually. I would just rely on sh shifting down to a lower level and then using the pedal assist, which is cadence sensing. So this motor's, you know, pretty efficient. And I think while we're riding it later, you'll get to see and, and listen to how it responds. Okay, I think it's time. I'm just gonna hop on real easy. Let's take it up to level four. That's my favorite. Release the parking brake and start pedaling. Pretty quickly, I'm at a speed that's kind of too fast to pedal. You can see my, my legs are going really fast. So this is when I would switch gears. There we go. All the way up to three. And then maybe I'll change my display back to speed. So I'm at 12.5, 12.6 miles per hour. And the motor's no longer helping me. And this is pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm able to turn, but I wouldn't want to take these turns too fast because I might end up on two wheels. You know, that is possible. All trikes are relatively stable at standstill, but once you start going, the weight shifts around and you can't lean into the corners the way that you can on a more traditional two-wheel electric bike or regular bike. So just keep that in mind. Like if you're someone who's, you know, a little bit worried about stability and stuff, I would probably ride at those lower levels of assist, like level two. And then you can see that the turning radius is really quite good. Just going around in circles here. <laughs> and the body position is good. I'm pretty upright. I can spot for traffic, say hey to my friends or whatever.
Okay guys, this U should help you see and hear that motor while we do some more ride tests. It's rated at 350 watts nominal, but it peaks much higher. And it offers really good torque. You know, compared to those hub motors and stuff, this is just, it's just more efficient. Um, and I think in terms of climbing, it'd do a good job. But the drivetrain only moves the right wheel, and that includes the brake. So you might wear that tire down a little bit faster. You might want to swap those, rotate them out down the line. I haven't ridden enough to really experience that, but you know, if you're locking up the back brake and skidding a lot and stuff, you might also brake and kind of end up turning because it's not evenly distributing the braking force. Of course, the front wheel brakes and stops the whole bike, but that's just another consideration that I'd make, uh, you know, going into this bike and, and trying to understand how to handle it. Now, I am riding in the highest level of pedal assist, and being a cadence sensor, it's not quite as smooth. Uh, you might have noticed a second there, I, I stopped pedaling, and then I started again, and it was like, whoop, you know, it kind of jumped right on. That's back to using some of the lower levels of assist just to be a little smoother. And again, the fact that this motor is a little more of a mid-level versus a refined, super high level. I don't know if any trikes use those expensive motors because the price point jumps up so much. One of the other neat things about the E3 Go is that it's not super wide. I think it's about 30 inches and there are these plastic caps on the axles in the back. So you can fit through most standard size doors. They're about 32 inches wide. And you don't have to worry so much about scraping up the walls and, and you know really damaging things because of those little axle covers. We're back inside. I just got it through the doors, no problem. I wanted to show you those caps up close. They really are nice. Um, do be careful, again, with some of the steel fenders and things. You, you don't want to don't want to step on this and, and bend it or get it scratched and, and have rust. Um, otherwise, you know, aluminum alloy frame. And if we come up here, you can see the display. This is this is what it looks like backlit. So even in this um, just you know general office lighting conditions um, it comes on and it, re it really looks nice it's kind of a faint blue and I believe if we hold the plus and the power button here we can get into um, some of these other menus and get some feedback about support level so do you want it to be a little bit more gentle when you start you can arrow all the way down to minus 15 and that's going to help you conserve some of the battery capacity. You're not going to jump right off the line, but you're going to go further. Or you can switch your approach and go way up to 15 and get that zippy feel. All the riding I was doing during the ride tests, that was just at zero, just kind of the, the general setup. And then if we press that little box button, we can change the light. We can raise it or lower it. We can change the backlighting on the LCD and then back to support. So it's a pretty neat system. Um, the other cool thing about just the, the iZip bikes that have the TransX motor system is that your dealer can, can go in and program this. So they can actually lower the top speed. For some people, 12.5 miles might be too fast. And indeed, you know, when I was in the highest level of assist, there was kind of that jerkiness going on. That's where I could lower the support level if I wanted to. And I could potentially lower the top speed to something more like you know, seven or eight miles per hour. So I'd go further and then I'd be less 
less liable to, to tip with those sharp turns. And one other final point is that, you know, while there are four levels of assist, there's actually another level that you get to by holding the power button for a couple seconds. Zero. So in this mode, this functions just like a trike, a regular person-powered tricycle. Of course, it's heavier and everything, but the reason you might want to know that is because perhaps the battery's getting really, really low. You aren't quite home, and you want to use that battery to run some lights that you've installed, or just to be able to see the display. Well, you can turn it down to zero by holding that power button for a couple seconds. And then, of course, if you hold it again for a few more seconds, it completely shuts down. And then it comes back to, you know, pressing the button on the on the battery pack there. And that's the one area, like you do have to bend over a little bit to get down here to press the button to pull out the battery. It's a little bit tight. It could be polished a little bit, but overall I think the weight distribution and the protection that those batteries receive back there is pretty good. Well, there you go. That is the iZip E3 Go. For the full write-up on this, including some more specs, those measurements I talked about, and some other electric trikes, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun out there. Ride safe.